Are you ready for some good news? Hell, I'll take some great news. Over the weekend, on Saturday, it was revealed that the voice actors who have been on strike for over a year have finally won. If you are not aware of what's been going on for the past year, let me enlighten you. For the past year, you've had voice actors unionize and protest and be on strike for over a year, striking and not working for companies like EA, Activision, and Take-Two Interactive because they've wanted certain fair treatment that they were not getting. This strike has been one of the longest strikes in the Screen Actors Guild, which was founded in 1933. 25% of the gaming industry voice actors were in this strike. But ironically, interestingly enough, these this 25% of voice actors makes up about 60% of the top selling gaming titles. Take Michael Hollick. He was the voice actor for Nico Bellic in GTA 4. And if you don't know, GTA 4 was a very, very great selling video game. It sold over 25 million copies. In fact, if we just do conservative estimates, and I've seen way bigger numbers than this, if we just look at this conservatively, the game, if it was retailed at, or $20, retailing at $20, just the average retail of the game. If we apply that to, to the 25 million copies that were sold, it grossed over $500 million. $500 million, and the game only made, and the game only cost $100 million. He, for the sessions that he committed to GTA 4, he got compensated for $100,000, and he got no royalties for that game. No royalties, even though they paid him a one-thousandth of what it cost them to produce the game. Now, the most important thing about this strike is that there's three things, and the the pro and the most important thing about the victory of the strike is that three really really great things have come out of it. And in fact, these were some of the biggest terms that I read and I saw in most articles, and that I saw were really really important to these voice actors. The first thing that they got was secondary compensation. Now, it's not based off of how many copies of the game that are sold post-release. It's how many sessions did the actress or actor did pre-release. And sessions are how many sessions did they, did they do in the studio? How many times did they come in and record voices? Because sometimes they could go in and they could record for hours on end and there would be no regulation really on how they would be compensated. Some of these voice actors would literally have to record death scenes, by the way. And if you are not aware, death scenes could be very, very strenuous because the voice actors and actresses, they would have to, sh to stream, or excuse me, scream for hours on end. And that would tear up their vocal cords and that would literally cause their throats to bleed. So at least they get some secondary compensation for this if they have to go on for longer sessions. The second thing that's pretty important is that they're supposedly supposed to still talk to the developers, the, the 11 companies that they were striking against, they're still in talks with how are they going to protect the voice actors' vocal cords because they still want to record, but they still don't really have a regulation and, uh, and rules to protect these voice actors and their, vo and their vocal cords. They're still in talks, and in fact, for one of the most important parts of this victory over these companies, it's that the companies are supposed to continue to work with the voice actors on these claims. And the third thing, and the most important thing that I thought was kind of interesting was the transparency. Because if you are not aware of this, the voice actors before this, they, didn't get the code name of the game. They didn't get certain parts of the script before they even had to record it. So what would happen is the voice actors would go in to record and they would be greeted with sex scenes and racial slurs and other things of that nature and racial and gay, gay slurs. And they didn't know that the game, for starters, they didn't know what the game was. They didn't know what the game was about. They didn't know that there would be sex scenes and racial slurs and stuff like that. And if they don't know that that's in the game, they could feel uncomfortable 
with recording these scenes. And whether you're okay with them saying it or not isn't the question. I, I have no problem with saying it. The problem was is that they didn't know what they were getting them into. And now they have a little bit of transparency. And it's not as if they know exactly what the game is. And in fact, the supposed agreement that they have is that the company now has to disclose the code name of the game, which is not final. You know, video game code names are usually or not. It's genre, whether the game is based on previously published intellectual properties, and whether the performer is reprising a prior role. Also, if they will be required to use unusual terminology, profanity, or racial slurs, whether they will be cons con whether there will be content of a sexual or violent nature, and whether stunts will be required. And that was all not known, especially in, in the highlights of this is the sexual content, the racial slurs, and even the stunts. So I'm very, very happy that the voice actors now have some transparency to their roles that they now either have to reprise or that they now have to perform. Either way you slice it, I'm very, very happy for the voice actors. I would consider this a victory. I said this when I posted my last video about this, about the voice actors on Strike for over a year. I said this in my last video. I said that we should try and we should side, we should side with the voice actors on this strike because these voice actors, they have to literally scream into microphones for hours on end permanently damaging some of their voices sometimes and we want to elongate their careers naturally and not shorten them artificially so i'm very excited for the voice actors this proposal this victory isn't finalized yet apparently a, a committee has to review this in october but i hope that they will side with the voice actors i hope they will approve this but i still think that there is a problem because there's no set rules on the vocal cord issue and the strain that it that some actors and actresses have to have to take on their vocal cords but i hope that what they get and what they negotiate with the companies is what they wanted and i hope that what they will continue to negotiate with the companies is fair until next time i hope you have a fantastic day i'll see you next